This video lesson continues um, what you were learning from section 11.2. We're going to look at the long-run behavior of polynomial functions and be using, um, I think, the backside of the class notes and example sheet that you have for section 11.2. So I want to give you a little bit of time to uh, try this on your calculator. The idea is to graph two functions. So you'll plug one of them, you can plug f of x in as f1 of x, and you'll plug g of x, you can plug that in as f2 of x, and then you're going to graph it first on this window from negative 3 to 3 and negative 10 to 50. Um, that would be uh, negative 3 to 3 is the x's, and negative 10 to 50 would be the y's. You can uh, access you know, these controls by going to the menu button and then uh, option four, window zoom, option one, window settings, and you should see ways that you can enter an X min, an X max, and then a Y min and a Y max, and that's what would be these numbers here. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can get these two graphs on your calculator. All right, thank you. See if uh, they look like this. As we might expect, these, these two graphs look fairly different. Um, you, would, you would think uh, you know, they're not going to look the same on this window, and indeed they do not. But let's take a look at these graphs a second time. This time you're going to be graphing them on the window where the x's go from negative 20 to positive 20. So you're going to be using larger values of x, and in order to do that, <clears throat> you're going to have to have a pretty big window for y. We don't need to go down in the window, but we're going to go all the way up to 100,000. So I would suggest that you open a new page, um, adding a page by hitting Control and Document, and then choosing a Graphs page. And if you scroll up in the uh, menu where you enter your functions, you'll see that you still have uh, this function in as f1 of x and this function is f2 of x, but you might need to turn those on by hitting Enter when you're in their boxes. Um, and then you can go back and reset your window or set your window up to go from negative 20 to 20 for X's and negative 10 to 100,000 for the Y's. All right, pause the video, give that a try. Thanks for doing that and see if this is what you got. As you can readily see this time, rather than having two graphs that look quite different, we actually appear, it almost seems like we have the same graph. Um, that is kind of interesting that when we open up the x values and start looking at larger x values, these two graphs appear to almost be the same function. You know, why is that? We can start to think about the fact that when we are raising numbers to the fourth power, that is, that is really going to be a lot more dramatic than when we simply square them or just multiply them by six. Okay, so you can almost think about the fact that this term, this x to the fourth term, kind of takes over when you start plugging in large values of x. And I might add that, that these aren't all that big of values. We're talking about negative 20 and positive 20. You know, if we start plugging in numbers like uh, 100 or 1,000 in for x, it really uh, becomes even more dramatic that uh, this graph, this blue graph, actually starts mimicking the red graph, the, the x to the fourth graph. So this is one reason we've been talking about the leading term of a polynomial. It plays a major role in how the graph is going to look when you start heading out towards positive infinity, when your x's head towards positive infinity, or when your x's head towards negative infinity, we can pretty much kind of discard the other, or not pay attention to the other terms, except for the leading term. That is what the graph is going to look like. I'm taking just a little closer look to this to kind of show you what's going on here. So we have um, a column here where I'm just having my inputs. These are going to be my x's. And then I have a column for my outputs of the first function, that f function, the polynomial. And then here's the outputs for uh, g of x, which is the, the leading uh, term, that x to the fourth term. 
Now, when you just subtract the, um, you know, the g of x values from the f of x values, that's what I'm doing here, you can see that uh, certainly when x is equal to 2, or they only differ by, um, by 52 units, and when x is equal to 10, you know, our output values are differing by 580, and then when we're up to 20, it's differing by 2,000. So it seemed like a much greater difference when we have large values of x. However, if we take the f of x value here, 68, and divide it by the 16, we can see uh, more of what's happening when we have large values of x. Okay, when we're just plugging in 2, which is pretty small value for x, the output value for f is four times, or more than four times greater than the output value for g. However, when we look at 10 and even 20, you can see that that the, the ratio of output values um, is almost the same, right? We, we're close to one, our ratio is one, which means our two values are very close to each other. And that's, that's what's going on here. Um, and the, of course, the further out we go, if x becomes 100 or 1,000, this, this ratio is gonna get closer and closer to one, which essentially means you have the same output values. All right, so let's just make a general observation here that as x is approaching plus or minus infinity, that means we could go either direction, right? We could be, if, we're, if x is approaching uh, negative infinity, then we are heading to the left, all right? And as x is approaching positive infinity, that means we're heading to the right. And in both cases, whether we're heading to the left or to the right, we can see over here that f of x comes closer and closer to mimicking g of x, which equals x to the fourth, right? And that x to the fourth is the leading term of our polynomial, right? So essentially, as we were saying, the leading term takes over. The All the other terms kind of don't don't matter as much because you're only squaring it. You're only multiplying your x's by six, and that doesn't. And adding twenty is next to nothing when you're when you're when you're raising your large numbers like ten thousand to the fourth power. Okay, even twenty to the fourth power seems to be enough. So in general. What we have here is if we just have the, a general polynomial, we'll, we'll use p of x, all right? A lot of times we'll use p for a polynomial. So p of x, and this is just the general form written in standard, you know, in, in the standard way. Um, so generally, um, p of x, the long-run behavior of p of x is that p behaves in the same manner as the power function y equals a sub n times x to the n when x becomes really large, okay? And we can just say that the leading, what we're saying here is that the leading term takes over for large values of x. How about that? Large words for large values of x. So let's see if we can apply this knowledge about uh, long run behavior to an example here where we're trying to, to graph uh, this polynomial. It's as you can see, it's kind of like uh, we saw with uh, quadratics back in semester one. Um, we can write a polynomial in factored form, but of course, if we multiplied all these out, we would get um, you know a bunch of power functions added, right? X cubed would be the first term, and then something times X squared, and so forth. So if we can determine the zeros of this function, um, we are well going to be well on our way to being able to graph this function like we did when we were doing quadratics. And of course, when we do set uh, x, I mean y equal to zero, we can set each factor equal to zero, and we'll just have that x equals negative five, negative two, and positive four. All right, so that gives us three points on our graph, and that really, I mean, since it's a polynomial, we know it's gonna kinda have this curvy shape. So let me see if I can make a possible sketch here. So here's a little dash graph of what it could look like, right? It could come down, hit negative five, then negative two, and then come back over and hit positive four. But of course, you're probably saying, well, how do you know it does that and not this? So 
there's a couple things we could do to try to figure out which way it goes. And one of those is to pay attention to the long run behavior of this function. Since our leading term would be uh, x cubed, right? If we multiply all this out, the highest degree term would be x cubed. Then we actually can know it's got to be the green function, right? Because uh, it needs to mimic what y equals x cubed would do. And we know that y x cubed would have a long run behavior of, of coming from the bottom, right? Coming through and then going up. So basically, you know, if we look at the graph uh, expanded out from like negative 20 to positive 20 or even further, it's this graph is going to have to look like uh, like the blue graph, the y equals x cubed curve, which the uh, green graph will mimic. My apologies for the wavy line. It's kind of hard to draw things straight with on the uh, iPad here with this pen that I have. In the textbook, you may see some reference to asking you to describe the long-run behavior of a function. And what that really means is to talk about what's going to happen as x either approaches negative infinity or as x approaches positive infinity. Okay, actually, to describe both. And so, of course, when we're talking about uh, negative infinity, right, we're, we're referring to what's happening to y as x heads left, right, or as, as the graph heads left, as x approaches negative infinity, as the graph heads left, what is the y doing? And you're just going to answer the question, does the y, uh, is the graph rising or is it falling, right? Does y head towards positive infinity or negative infinity? When we're dealing with polynomials, it's, it's got to do one or the other. And of course, in this case, we can see that it's falling, right? So we would be heading towards negative infinity, all right? And then over here, as x is approaching positive infinity, that of course means as the graph moves to the right, we just want to know, is the y rising or falling? And since it is rising, we would say that y approaches positive infinity, or just, you can say, infinity. One more thing I wanted to mention about this graph is that we could have also figured out that um, the graph took this shape as opposed to coming down and then going back up by looking at the y-intercept, right? If we plugged in 0 for x up here, we would see that we'd get, what, 5 times 2 times um, negative 4, which would be negative 40. So, you know, we know that our graph has to be crossing the x-axis right down here at negative 40. So now it's your turn to, let's turn it around and see if you can sketch a graph that has these two properties. So that as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. And then as x approaches positive infinity, that's, if you don't see a plus, that's just positive infinity, then y is also approaching positive infinity, right? It's different things that can happen. Pause your video and give that a try. See if this is what you got. Yes, essentially, if you drew something that just looked like a parabola or close to it, I've got those wiggles in there. Um, of course, you could have gotten a little fancier and just come down like this and done a couple curves and then gone up. That would have been fine too, but all we care about is the end behavior. Um, are we heading are we heading, are we rising as, we, as we're moving left, and are we rising as we're moving right? That's what this is describing. And we know two things about the leading term of whatever this polynomial is, right? One thing we know is that it has to have an even uh, degree on it, right? So it might be a fourth degree, sixth degree, second degree. And we also know it's got to have a positive coefficient. Um, it could be positive one, you know, or any positive number. Since it's rising on both sides, it's got to be positive. Okay. Um, try letter B and I pause your video now. All right. Is this what you got? So we can see here that uh, whether we're going left or right, we want our y values to head down, right? Go to negative infinity. So basically, we have something more like a reflected parabola. And in terms of the polynomial, right, we would have to know that the leading term 
is uh, once again uh, has a an even exponent, right? Something like uh, x to the sixth or x squared, but it would have to have a negative coefficient. All right, maybe like negative two, negative three, something like that, since it's going down. All right, give uh, the last one a try. Uh, it's on the next slide, so pause your video and, and try that. See if this is what you got. So hopefully you have something that looks, um, you know, like a cubic, or it could even be a higher degree, but it's rising as we're moving left, right, as that's indicating, and it's uh, falling as we're moving down, heading towards negative infinity. I mean, sorry, falling as we're moving to the right. Um, and of course, as far as the leading term for these polynomials, we know it would have to be some kind of odd number Right, so it could be maybe x to the seventh, um, and its leading term, I mean, its coefficient must be negative, right? Since it's heading down, this is what, uh, you know, think about flipping the cubic, so like negative three x to the seventh.